before it's the Gulf current, Gulf Stream, it's the Florida current. Before that is the Loop current. Before that is the Yucatan current. Before that is the, the Caribbean current. Before that is the North uh, Brazil current. And before that is the South Atlantic current. So it, it, it uh, but it's, it's one river of water. Now, what essentially has happened is a key part of this uh, river of warm water is the loop current, where it goes, as it's coming up from the Yucatan current, it goes into the Gulf of Mexico. Normally, it makes a big loop, picks up a lot of additional heat, goes back out the Gulf, between, it runs in the Florida Straits between Florida and Cuba, and it runs up the east coast, uh, where it's called the Florida Current. It runs up the east coast of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, part of North Carolina to Cape Hatteras at the Outer Banks, where it shoots across the Atlantic. It becomes the, the, the uh, Gulf Stream. Now, it's a college-level uh, physics experiment where they take a big plexiglass tub of cold water they inject a stream of warm water, which they color so they can see it, and they study the boundary layers. If you add oil to that mix, what the oil does to a warm water stream in a cold body of water is it breaks the boundary layers down. And in doing so, it basically kills the velocity, okay? Now, the, the Gulf, the, the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico, it has ebbies and so forth. Uh, which are, are traditional. But what, what we have not seen, and the data there goes back at least 10 years, the, 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 the satellite data and so forth, is this total stopping of the Gulf current. It's not making the loop anymore. And it, it basically completely stopped July 28th, and it hasn't resumed that. Now, in addition, of course, some of the, the Yucatan current bypasses it and goes on up. You still have some current going up, okay? And the Gulf Stream is now uh, significantly reduced. By my calculations, it's about 250 miles off Cape Hatteras. It, it begins to break up. And you can see that on my site. If you go to my site, Europe, do a Google search, Large Sterling Europe, and you'll see uh, that the scientific or, or the satellite images and so forth where they show the Gulf Stream breaking up. And you can see uh, uh, the, the Gulf Stream from several years ago, how it's supposed to function, and how it's changed over the last couple of months. Now, the it, it basically is supposed to get all the way to Ireland, and then where it splits, it's not getting there. And at a certain latitude for, for over a month now, the, 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 the temperatures in the North Atlantic have been uh, 10 degrees Celsius cooler. Uh, you're seeing an early winter uh, in Europe. Uh, Russia has seen this, this first snows two weeks early. Norway's had about half a meter of snow in, in uh, August 30th, which is very unusual. They have had snow in August, but it's fairly rare. Uh, in the Alps, you're, you're seeing the first snowfall a month early. And uh, on the opposite end of the world, in the Antarctic, uh, of course, they've had a very bitter uh, cold winter. In South America, in South Australia, it's been the coldest winter for 35 years. And the sea ice uh, in the Antarctic is near close to record levels. So you're speaking about a calamity going all around the world. Yes. And I presume you can foresee crop failures and some form of... Well, you're already seeing that because you're seeing a, you've seen a hell of a spike in the price of wheat on the commodities market because uh, Russia has, has abrogated uh, its contracts to export wheat this year, uh, and it will probably need to import some wheat. Uh, the Ukraine was also suffered uh, a, a, a loss in wheat output. It's still doing some exporting, but its, it's yield is down considerably. Now, the reason for the uh, extreme heat this summer that was in Russia, uh, along with uh, uh, the drought in Russia and parts of the Ukraine, as well as the high heat in Asia with a lot of flooding in China, even down a little bit into North Korea, certainly uh, extreme flooding in Pakistan, a little bit in India and various places, uh, high heat, not flooding, but high heat in Japan. 
is the fact that the jet stream would now the jet stream is a, a atmospheric stream 200 mile per hour plus that circumnavigates the the nor, uh, northern hemisphere here's the thing the gulf stream and and its tributaries um the gulf stream affects the weather patterns for up to seven miles over the the atlantic you've got this warm body of water this river of warm water flowing in a, a much much colder body a very large ocean and above that you get cumulus clouds and so forth it affects the jet stream which flows through it it wasn't basically there in certain areas, uh, and and that changed the direction, uh, that changed how the jet stream was 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 uh, performing in a sense. So, the uh, according to all the experts, the reason for the drought in Russia, the high heat and the flooding, uh, and you also had flooding in the Czech Republic and parts of Germany. The reason for that was the jet stream behaved abnormally. What I'm telling you is the reason it behaved abnormally was because the, uh, the, the North Atlantic current is not base, is basically not there anymore. You don't have the velocity. It's died. It's died because of the oil. Do you see any solution? Do you have any suggestions of what could be done? Well, okay. That's a hell of a problem because here's the problem. The corrupt Obama administration allow British Petroleum to use uh, roughly two, maybe three million gallons of the deadly car exit dispersant, as well as several million additional gallons of other dispersant agents. Now, the reason this was done, there's an automatic fine, per gallon fine, for oil that's spilled. So British Petroleum has lied through its teeth from day one about what was really happening with the full uh, blessing of the Obama administration very corrupt Obama administration, by using dispersants that were able to hide most of the oil. About 78% of the oil that is uh, that has dispersion sprayed on it on the surface sinks to the bottom of the ocean, and about half of the Gulf floor is covered with oil now. Now, in addition to that, when you spray oil in, at down under the ocean, you get even a higher percentage of oil that's retained. Uh, so most of the oil, and, and there's probably 350,000, I'm sorry, 350 million gallons of crude oil, most of it probably in the area of 80% is still there, but it's mostly under the surface of the sea, from, from below the surface all the way down to the seabed. Now, this is, this is an enormous amount. Uh, a key part, the pacemaker, in a sense, of this thermal regulatory system, this heat conveying system, is the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico. There's so damn much oil there. Uh, and, and, of course, even there's oil that's gone up the East Coast, too. Uh, 